When I'm abusing my partner, one of my favorite things to do is to give her the silent treatment. When I know that she's anxious and that she's desperate to speak to me and all she wants is the validation of knowing I'm there, that I still care or finding out where I am or who I'm with, I find it productive if I want to induce as much anxiety and distress in her as I possibly can to go completely silent and to give her nothing at all. In that empty space, all of her worst fears can be manifested as her imagination takes over and all of her fears begin to just completely eat her alive. Silent treatment is an excellent form of narcissistic abuse and control precisely because it induces such a large amount of distress in the victim, in the target, with very little effort. The next thing I like to do, triangulation. So there's me, there's her, and then there's a third party that I can bring in. If I can induce dread or fear in her by making her paranoid that there's another girl who is uh, taking my attention or filling up that space, that's a good way of inducing jealousy, uh, which she will then hate herself for, so that's handy. And also the terror, the abandonment terror in her that I'm gonna leave her or that I'm gonna cheat on her. I'm gonna somehow desecrate the sanctity of our relationship. The other thing I can do by introducing a third person into the scenario is suggesting that there are other people judging her, other people who agree with me that her perspective is the wrong perspective. And then she starts to get this sense that she's besieged by enemies. It's not just me. There's now a collective growing of people that believe that her perspective is wrong and that my perspective is the right perspective. This is a good way of driving somebody crazy slowly over time and of convincing them that their perception of the situation is wrong no matter what the situation is and no matter what their perceptions are. Gaslighting is one of these terms that has entered the culture now and everybody uses it. Um, and so you would think that this is something that maybe can't be in the narcissist's toolbox anymore because everybody knows what you're doing. But there's so much confusion around gaslighting and people are gaslighting each other about gaslighting. Gaslighting does not mean just lying. Lying is good, lying is a useful tool, but this is worse. Gaslighting specifically refers to the movie, or movies, plural, gaslight where the guy in the movie was going around the house and changing the lighting in the house, moving it up and down, and then telling his wife that he wasn't changing the lights up and down, that her perception was what was wrong. So lying is akin to gaslighting, but gaslighting is next level. You wanna convince the target that their perception of reality is wrong. That's the point of gaslighting, that their perception of reality is faulty and broken and that they're actually going crazy. If you need to use lying to achieve that end, then go ahead and use lying to achieve that end. But lying itself, in and of itself, is not gaslighting. Gaslighting means you're slowly, over time, altering that person's perception of reality so that they cease to trust themselves. Reactive abuse is one of my all-time favorites because after reactive abuse, the target really starts to hate themselves and really starts to feel a huge amount of regret and guilt and it just softens all their boundaries. It really dissolves their capacity to say no and to refuse me and to refuse my evil deeds as evil. Reactive abuse is where I do something to provoke the target. I find out what her weak spots are, what her vulnerabilities, her sensitivities are. I deliberately push those buttons. I deliberately provoke her into some sort of explosive outburst, which anybody, any human being over time will respond with an explosive outburst given enough passive aggression, slights and little digs here and there and triggering of their vulnerabilities. Once she's had the outburst, I've got it. That's reactive abuse. Then all I have to do is focus on her outrageous outburst. Maybe she will scream at me and become angry and then I'll say, my God, you're such an angry person. Maybe you need to go to therapy. Maybe she will start crying and have a breakdown and become very sad and upset. And I'll say, my God, you're so weak. What is wrong with you? I barely did anything and look at you. And then I'll treat her with contempt and disgust. And I'll really focus on the ugliness and the inappropriateness and the hostility of her response. If it's a woman, 
I would say probably you want to really focus in on on an uh, like an angry and jealous response because uh, women don't like to think of themselves as being jealous. They really don't like that. Some women really don't like to think of themselves as being weak, but most women, it's the jealousy thing you can get her on. It's so ugly to be jealous and it's so ugly and unfeminine to be angry. With a man, if you can provoke a response of sadness, then you can say to him, oh my God, what kind of a man are you? Look at you, you're, such, you're so weak, you're such a pussy. What do you do, you're crying now? What is wrong with you? If you can induce anger in a man, you can go, oh my God, I can't believe, you're such a bully, you're terrifying me. This is awful, are you one of those violent, awful men, just like your father? That's another nice thing to layer in there. If they have an issue with their mother or their father, bring that up. If she's jealous, and she has an outburst, you'd be like, oh, look at you, you're jealous, just like your horrible mother that you don't like. If he has an angry outburst, you'd be like, oh my God, look at you, you're such a bully and a tyrant and a psychopath, just like your father. This is a really good way of further triggering all of their insecurities from their past and really doing as much emotional damage as possible with very, very little effort. Reactive abuse, it's beautiful. All of these things can be layered in with passive aggression. Generally speaking, I wouldn't advocate for active aggression because active aggression can be called out. If you're actively aggressive, they can screenshot that and show their friends and show somebody outside of the cult of one, outside of the shared fantasy space, maybe a therapist or some sort of um, a mentor who can then help them to escape the situation. So be very, very careful and very judicious in using active aggression. Passive aggression. Passive aggression is much more powerful because it's harder to call out and it's easier to deny. Some things can be written via text in a tone that is passive aggressive, that if you're called out on it and you say, look what it says here, if you read it out loud, but change your inflection, it can sound completely innocent. So it's much easier to worm your way out of passive aggression if you're ever called out for it. Active aggression, that's kind of hard to say, you know, that that's not bullying, it's not a deliberate and open provocation. So be passive aggressive as much as you possibly can. The other great thing with passive aggression is if you use it long enough over a long enough timeline, it becomes a kind of reactive abuse that's likely to induce one of our wonderful outbursts that we can exploit. So use passive aggression, not active aggression in your texts as much as you can. Hey folks, I hope that you enjoyed this theatrical display of evil. Remember that any and all communication with a narcissist is an opportunity to abuse and exploit. If you can reduce contact, reduce it as much as you can. If they're texting you, then when you text back, text less words. Don't engage, abandon sincere communication when you're communicating with the insincere. Don't give them an authentic emotional response. Don't give them any real information. Gray rock is the best way. No contact is the best thing to do, but it's not always practical. So if you're in a shared parenting situation, shared custody situation, we would usually advocate for more of a gray rock type of thing where you wanna be so dull and so boring and so on mission with whatever the facts are, whatever you need from them, you need money from them, you need to show up to a court, you need them to pick the kids up on time. Keep it dull, keep it non-responsive, don't give them any oxygen. Your emotional pain, your emotional reactions are the oxygen that they feed from. So keep it bland and as much as possible, reduce that contact. Don't play the game the way that they want you to play it. If you want more information about coming out of a narcissistically abusive relationship, we have the unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse course. It's available from richardgrannon.com. If you wanna get that course, just click the link down below. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for your time and for your attention, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.